Mitchell Stankovic and Associates, and the Underground Ideas into Action presents the Underground Chats, authentic conversations with credit union thought leaders. Today's chat, community driven for 92 years with Deborah Fears, President and CEO of Chicago Post Office Employees Credit Union. So, hello, Deborah. How are you today? I'm <laughs> great, Susan. It's nice to see you. How are nice you? To... Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. And we welcome you to the underground community. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. All right. So, I we want to, you know, we want to start by just saying, how are you? How's your family? How's the credit union family? How are you guys doing? Yeah, you know, Susan, it's it's a day by day thing, I'll say. Um, and, you know, overall, I'm doing great. Um, I'm grateful and happy to say that, you know, I'm healthy, my family's healthy. And that is really um, more than most people can ask for in these times, you know. Um, I think you know, as I mentioned, 2020 was just such a challenging year for everybody. And, you know, everyone was so hopeful to move forward into the new year and just kind of start fresh. So, you know, I think I've gone through just about the full range of emotions that you can have uh, in 2020, just from, um, you know, excitement to panic, to stress, to, you know, just, you um, struggling and trying to figure out what's next. And so I think what I came up with is that, you know, just to take it day by day. And so with that said, you know, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, I have a six-year-old who is remote learning. So that's fun. Um, the nice thing, though, is that he's, he's involved in like a little learning pod. So it's, there's him and there's a couple other uh, parents that I got together with. And so there's just the three boys. And uh, they get together, so they still get that interaction um, while still getting a chance to learn. So that's great. Uh, the credit union family, you know, we're here. We're, we're surviving, and we are um, taking it day by day. You know, we're, everybody is, you know, I think people have their ups and downs because obviously people have things going on outside of the credit union um, with their own families. And so, you know, sometimes that's day by day, but... Overall, I'm happy to say everyone is healthy and, and we're doing well. So. I was just thinking, I was just thinking when you were talking about um, your, your son and this whole idea of a village, um, in our own ways, we've all navigated the environment and like you said, every day, recently it's been every hour. Um, that we've been keeping an eye on what's taking place in the world. But, um, but reaching out and having that support system from the other, you know, the other people in your tribe, I think is critical. I, I had a chance to take a look at your, um, a little bit of your third quarter financials and stuff, and you guys are seeing real deposit growth, but you've also been able to maintain your net worth. So, um, Sounds like a lot of confidence on the part of your members. Yeah, you know, thankfully, you know, and I think um, that was one thing that we tried to do uh, when the pandemic first kind of blasted through and blasted on the scene was uh, really just touching base with our members, um, letting them know, hey, you know, we're still here. Um, we're still here for you. How can we help you? Um, and I think just that constant communication with the members, I mean, we even went as far as to make wellness calls to our members, just, you know, no particular reason, just to see literally how they were doing. And if there were things that we could help them with, um, do you need to set up your online services? Do you know about our shared branching services? Um, you know how to access your funds? We have a, a very large uh, percentage of older members. So we wanted to just make sure they knew that you know, things are going on, but we're still here to assist you. So, um, yeah. And you are one of the, I, I love the story. Um, you are one of the credit unions that still has a single sponsor and you're located outside of Chicago mm -hmm. and it's a postal service. So you've got people that are, if you will, frontline um, 
employees as far as your your member group, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So, Susan, we, uh, the Chicago Post Office Employees Credit Union, um, we have been in existence since 1928. So we are the second largest credit union in Illinois. I'm sorry, second oldest credit union in Illinois. Uh, We just celebrated 92 years. So, yeah, we've been here, you know, we've been through recessions. I mean, I was not here, obviously, during that time, but, um, you know, we've been through it all. And our members, they are, they're very loyal. You know, it's one of the reasons why we do have a large percentage of older members, because our members have stood by us through the test of time. And so, yeah, we've, we've been around, Susan, we've been here. And, and they are, they're on the front lines, um, you know, with the pandemic, Our members didn't experience that large, um, you know, just the layoffs that some of the other industries experience. But, you know, you also have to think about some of the um, turmoil that they may have been experiencing because they are out there on the front lines every day and they're worried about their families just as well. So um, it's, you know, it's been tough for our members, but we, yeah, we've still been here single seg. That's amazing. And I was thinking, too, this is just getting a feel for your environment with the shift to virtual and so many people using the Amazon Prime and using the services. I know the postal service has had to continue their their niche and work with us um, on a consumer basis. And I just wonder, do you see a disruption in that um, in, in that area, when it comes to the future, not just from a pandemic standpoint, but, but because of what's taken place overall with how people, consumers are using um, additional sources. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's always on our minds. You know, I, I would not be telling the truth if I said it wasn't. Um, you know, I, the post office has always been in the news. It's been in the news for years um, as these digital Uh, services start to ramp up and people are starting to use them more, Um, you know, all we can do is, but they are still using the postal service. So, you know, it's not going anywhere, but we do have to kind of think futuristically and be somewhat forward thinking um, in terms of what the future looks like for the postal service. And, um, you know, if we can stay a single sponsor or, you know, if we have to expand our field of membership, you know, these are always things that we're, we're thinking about um, because, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen. Well, I think part of our strategic planning process is to not only deal with what we're dealing with today, but looking to the future. And it just popped into my head as you were talking about 95 years, you know, yeah. 90, I mean, that's a long time. Um, for us to count on our credit union as part of our hub, you know, yeah. so yeah. it's, it's interesting, the transition. So when you look at uh, 2020 and how you survived, what's the, you know, one of the key things that, that come to mind? Gosh, one of the key things, you know, Susan, is, is that, that old saying um, that teamwork makes the dream work. You know, <laughs> I think, honestly, you know, we are a small institution. Um, we're a small but mighty team. And, you know, really, we just banded together. Um, We focused on our members. We focused on each other and just really did what we needed to do to make sure that we were providing service uh, the best way that we could. You know, Um, we amped up our digital services. We didn't have bill pay. We didn't have remote deposit. Um, You know, we were barely using like electronic signatures. We did all that at once, (laughs) you know, so uh, yeah, it was a very busy year for us <laughs> last year. Um, our online, our mobile app needed to be upgraded. So there were all these things that, you know, we had on the plan, um, but we just, we had to dive in because we wanted to make sure that we could continue to provide service for our members. Um, we even went as far as to provide um, curbside service during the pandemic. Yeah, so we are, we sit on a busy street in Chicago, and we don't have a drive-through. And so we're a cashless operation here at this branch. And so we thought, you know, we need to be able to service our members. Okay, we have to close the lobby, but what if we can go out to them? So we created like this sidewalk drive-through 
And I mean, the team, the staff, they, I, I want to say they kind of liked it. Um, they would, they made a game out of it sometimes where they were seeing who would get the most steps with their smartwatches, you know? <laughs> and so, Aww. yeah, I mean, we just, we try to, we just try to do what we could. Um, like I said, we're small but mighty. So I would definitely say teamwork is really what got us through. Everyone rolled up their sleeves to figure out where they could pitch in. You know, we also made sure that we continue to support the community um, around us, even if it was something as simple as buying lunch for the team, just, you know, from a local restaurant. But um, th that's how we survived, just teamwork. That's fabulous. And, and with a smaller staff, too, everybody needed each other. I mean, you really depended on each other. So. Oh, gosh, yes, Susan. And I, and I should probably mention, um, and I, I've told this story. Um, so I, I was officially named uh, CEO like seven days before the government shutdown. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, um, you know, here I am with my, you know, I'm just skipping down the, the new CEO lane with my, you know, my shiny new CEO bubble. And I have my plans in hand of, of what I think I'm going to do, right? And then, you know, pandemic and everything is shut down. And everyone's looking at me like, okay, so what are, what are we going to do here? You know, now we have to communicate and we have to make sure the staff is safe and our members are safe. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out what in the world I'm doing. <laughs> and so um, definitely not the welcome that I thought I would have as the CEO, uh, but it, it's been quite the learning experience. I'll put it that way. Now, were you there before or were you recruit? Okay, so at least you knew the board and you yes. knew the team. Uh, yes, yes. And I was, um, actually, I was interim CEO for, you know, since 2019. So, like, about June of 2019. Um, and then I was officially named president, like I said, the week before the shutdown. And um, it's just, it's a different feeling, though, when you are interim versus, now you're actually the person, you know. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. and um, that's one of those congratulations versus yeah. congratulations. <laughs> yes. uh, it's yeah. very, um, it's hard to imagine because on one hand, you, you want to bring your new lunch pail and, and get started on your new year. And then all of this happens. Um, oh, yeah. I just, you know, you must be really, and the board must be really proud of what you accomplished this year because you were there for your members as well as the reality of um, the numbers, you know, when you finish yeah. the year. Yeah, so. you know, and, and I have to say, you know, um, again, the, the team, they have been very supportive. Um, you know, sometimes it can be an adjustment going from, you know, peer, you know, now to, you know, in a, a top leadership position. Um, they've been very supportive. And then also my board, they've been fantastic because I'm sure they probably had to think, uh, you know, just, well, hopefully they didn't second guess, but <laughs> just, you know, making sure that um, I was up for the challenge because it was definitely a challenge. And, you know, just coming into the role, the board, they were so supportive of, you know, just the decisions and things that we had going on. Um, we had just started uh, a renovation of our of the exterior of our building, so now we have we have contractors everywhere, and it, it's just, it was it was a lot, Susan. Yeah, I am, and therein lies the interesting part about this is that that there's been a lot, and we've all grown, and we've all quote, pivoted, and we've gotten, you know, used to whatever the change is for that day. Um, but there's also, I, I was talking to um, a child psychologist, and she was saying that, you know, the, the fight or flight syndrome, you know, the good yeah. news about that is, is that, you know, it teaches us, but typically it goes away. In other words, you have a period of, of just being able to relax a little bit. And with where we've been right now is it's constantly in that um, high stress, if you will, or, you know, high um, alert. So, you know, the term stress is so 
um, we throw it around so much. The the reality is, it's kind of our daily lives right now. It's just it is. whether it's home or work or you know the environment. Yeah. So, what do you think twenty twenty? I mean, I, when I was I prepared these questions last week, I didn't anticipate this week. But um, what do you think for twenty twenty one? Where are you guys going? What are your your thoughts and your key priorities? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, and always keeping in mind uh, the ability to pivot, because as you said, you, it's kind of hard to plan these days. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen from day to day. Um, what we think we're going to focus on uh, <laughs> is uh, really just reassessing and assessing our digital strategy, of course, because, um, you know, as I mentioned, so many of these things we had on the radar but um, maybe not quite all at once <laughs> or not all at the same time. And so just trying to figure out now, where do we go from here? Um, trying to focus on our member experience, understanding, you know, where our members are, our staff is so, so important. Um, and I think that one thing that the pandemic did was to kind of expose some of the areas where, you know, maybe we could have more efficiency or maybe there were some areas for improvement or learning. And, you know, I think that there's always things to be learned. And, um, you know, so that's something we definitely want to focus on. Um, after the pandemic, uh, we ramped up training in-house with the staff. We now have um, at least half of our staff are certified credit union financial counselors now. And so, you know, we want to kind of continue building that momentum and making sure that the staff feels empowered and that they feel equipped to help the members and really guide them to achieve whatever the goals they have. So, you know, we want them to feel empowered. And I think training is the biggest way you could do that. I love that. And I, I think that it also gave them an opportunity to feel like they're adding to their career. They're yeah. adding that depth and, and they can reach the members and support the members. One thing um, that if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to go back to in uh, 2020, not only did you deal with um, um, what's happening with the pandemic, but obviously we also dealt with probably one of the toughest years for social unrest and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, the murder of George Floyd and yeah. that we all dealt with. How did that impact your group? And what do you see? Is there a sustainable difference that you're going to make based upon um, the events of 2020? Gosh, yeah, that's a great question, Susan. Um, it's, it was definitely a challenging time, that, that whole you know, just that whole ordeal. Um, very challenging for, for so many of us. Um, we have a large percentage, majority of our members are actually African American. So they, um, you know, it was kind of like we were in the fight together. They were um, just kind of empathizing with what was going on in the world and trying to understand what we could do to change um, and how we could play a part in making that change. You know, I think, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is going to be so important for the credit union industry. It, it makes sense. It's what we are, it's part of our fabric, you know, and so I'm just so happy to see that um, there are some credit unions that are really um, starting to invest in this and, you know, be intentional about it. Um, and I think that it's going to go a long way um, with the credit union's future. And just understanding the community that we live in. I mean, the world um, is, it looks nothing like it did 50 years ago. And it's going to look completely different in the next 50 years. So I think the sooner people kind of understand the changes that are happening in the world and the, how the changes are affecting the community around us, um, I think it's going to help us be better servants to our members and, and just better, better people, period that your, your point about DEI is so important. And I believe that systemically, we have to not just have it be event driven. I think that we have to really have drivers to yeah. push through new initiatives and to challenge each other and to see um, measurable metrics. So I, you know, the fact that you have an African-American um, field of membership, I'd be very interested in, um, you know, 
getting your board, getting some of your people involved in some of the initiatives that we have because we need that real representation. And so as we, as we go forward, I think being mindful to be inclusive is something that is, you know, just on my mind. So thank you for going down that path with me. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Susan. And I'm, I'm happy to, you know, support any way that we can. Um, you know, I, I sit, so, every, you know, everyone knows AACC. Um, we have the regional chapters. And um, I am the vice president for the Midwest chapter of AACC. So, Excellent. Yeah, so we're really trying to just kind of ramp things up and, and you know, get out there and just partner with people um, who are looking to incorporate DEI into their initiatives. So, you know, there's AACC and now CUP, and um, there's so many organizations, inclusive, um, that, you know, can help credit unions. And like I said, this is, there's no, there's never, there's not been a better time. This is the perfect time to get involved. Well, and Renee is, uh, you know, she's a bug. And I think that her passion um, and her preparation, you know, sometimes yeah. that, that people look at something because something takes place. Now that's, um, you know, they're in the right place. But in her yeah. particular case, as in yours, you've made a commitment on a long-term basis. And so I, I like to see us continue continue our development from an inclusiveness of leadership and ensuring that that similar to any type of, of um, um, diversity, we want to make sure people have opportunities to be at the table. I also want us to see an energy at the board level. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. um, that's a personal thing because we do a lot of work with um, modernizing board governance. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that having um, a mindful strategy for diversity of thought is going to be key. Oh, absolutely, Susan. I mean, absolutely. I, I can't even say anything better than that. I mean, it's, it's going to be imperative if we are to move forward, if we are to be sustainable, if we're going to serve um, be service to the to the community. You know, if you're going to serve your community, you have to know the people in the community, and you have to be able to um, understand them and and empathize with what they are going through. It just it's imperative if you're to to be around, really. That's yeah. Absolutely. So when we think about those blinding flashes of the obvious, the things that are kind of in front of our faces that um, we may have an aha moment or something took place and you said, boy, this is something that we're going to do differently or we're going to continue to do going forward. Can you share some of those with us? Yeah, yeah. You know, and like I said, that was such an uh, interesting, I love that term, BFOs. It's kind of like a BFF, but you know, <laughs> uh, a BFO, but um you know, I think, like you said, some of these things, it's almost like the, the duh, aha moments, you know, um, you know, remote work for those employees who can do it. Um, you know, virtual banking is not something that we had done before. And we've kind of been toying around with that, just, you know, member account openings uh, virtually, you know, um, making loan appointments uh, virtually, those kinds of things. Um, you know, perhaps collaboration with other credit unions. I know, you know, costs are continuing to rise um, for everything. And so just working with other credit unions to see where some collaboration could happen. Um, you know, I don't know if it's quite the obvious thing, but it's probably something worth exploring, you know. Um, and then also just keeping in mind employee and board engagement and, you know, the connection making sure that that connection is there because, you know, obviously with the virtual environment, um, we're not able to do a lot of the things that we've, you know, been able to do in the past, you know, even from holiday parties or um, just team out. And so, um, you know, just trying to make sure that we're staying connected and, and, you know, looking for ways to make sure that happens so that we don't lose the connection. Well, the idea of sidewalk um, service is one that I have to put down on my book because yes. I really think that talk about creative, talk about the team, you know, coming together yeah. and saying, how can we make this happen? I just, I love that. And, yeah. and to me, that was a BFO. It's like, well, if you don't have it this way, how can we do it? Let's figure it out. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, one other thing we did, um, I mentioned the uh, renovation that we were doing. Uh, well, we, we have a, an ATM room that's adjacent to our building. And so we thought, you know what, why not put a walk-up window in there? So we actually have a walk-up service window now. So we don't actually have to be outside. So, you know, we're in Chicago and the weather is not, you know, always cooperative, we'll say. And so um, now we have a walk-up window inside of our ATM room that we can service members and still be protected. So, yeah. yeah I guess me complaining about it being cooler here when it's in the 50s is really not appropriate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, Susan. I have to be honest. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 25 here today so yeah yeah a little different world huh yeah well um so what two ideas into action would you like us to think about that you think are important for the industry to be thinking about as well gosh okay there's so much to think about um as we try to foresee what's going to happen in 2021 um, I think one of the things we, we really just talked about, and that is the focus on DEI, you know, because, you know, as I mentioned, the world, it, it looks nothing like it did 50 years ago. And, you know, it's going to continue to shift. And so just being intentional about incorporating DEI into your credit union, um, I think that um, it, it's, it's vital to moving forward um, in the industry. And so I think I would ask people to really just, if you're not already thinking about DEI, um, definitely that needs to be on your agenda. Um, and then also just, I think, paying attention to your membership. That's, that's always um, at the forefront because the pandemic has made uh, so many things change for people just all over. And I think as member needs shift, we have to be able to, to shift with them. Um, you know, you talk about uh, industry terms or things that our credit union, um, that we're, we've been thinking about. But I think the, the biggest word that has been the buzzword in our credit union is actually the word pivot. Because, you know, it, we're always having to, to shift and change. And we really wanna be able to be agile and move with the changes and the needs of our members. So I think, you know, as uh, the kind of forced a lot of credit unions to adopt uh, digital technologies um, or digital transformations within their credit union, um, I think still making sure that you're in touch with member needs and that you're keeping that connection with your members is going to be so important. So I would just, um, that I would encourage the audience to, to think about that as well. I, I, I believe that your, um, your single sponsor um, commitment is so cherished from my perspective. And I know that there'll be pressures um, in the future that will require that you evolve. So I get that. But in today's environment, that common bond and that belief that you have in you know, multiple generations of members is like, um, it's just awesome. I just want you to know that it, it's just, it's wonderful to see it. And it's wonderful to see how you guys have repositioned based upon what the members needs are, but there must be extreme loyalty. Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, Susan, I just had um, a member oh, probably last month and um, well, she called because her mom had been a member um, for probably like 40 years or something. And her mom, you know, had recently passed away. And, you know, initially she was calling to, to find out what she needed to do to close the account. Um, and she said that, you know, she was talking to her husband and they realized like, why, why are we closing the account? You know, mom was a loyal member to this credit union. She loved this credit union. You know what, let's just keep, you know, let's just stay there. Let's become members. And, you know, we get stories like that all the time of, from people who, you know, their parents brought them in to open an account when they were, you know, 15. And now, you know, 20 years later, they're still here banking with us. And, you know, they love the credit union. So definitely we have some very loyal members um, and we really appreciate everything that they're out there doing on the front line. You know, healthcare workers as well, 
um, our members are essential workers and uh, they are very loyal to the credit union. So we are grateful for that. And we have to expand our thinking about um, the front line yes. service. I mean, when you think about, you know, the, the obviously our medical field and the ones that have been, you know, just exhausted in what they're doing. But I'm, I, I since my sister um, worked for the post office, and there was such a, a belief in each other and the teamwork and what it took. And I just think that um, we, our essential workers, <laughs> you're an essential worker, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. So just congratulations on the pivot that you've done. We, we um, um, changed it this year at the end of the year to be shift happens because from yes, our I perspective, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, things are changing so much. So, yeah, yeah. well, is there anything else that you'd like to challenge the industry with? I mean, I believe in what you said about DEI. I think that it has to be more than us just talking about it. Now we've got to take action. So yeah. that was fabulous. And um, paying attention to the membership, you've been able to, to do that for generations. So I'm so excited. And any other um, thought you want to share with us? Ah, just, you know, let's keep up the good fight. You know, credit unions have overcome so much adversity over the years. And, you know, I just think it's amazing. Um, I didn't start in the credit union industry. I came from consulting world and, um, you know, never thought I would, I would end up in credit union. It's, you know, I hear that story from so many people. Um, but, you know, once you get bitten with the Kool-Aid bug, as they say, um, it's just amazing how you get to do this work and, um, you know, serve people who are, you know, just like you, you know, and it's just, it's just really amazing. And so I would just say, you know, let's keep up the good fight because we've been here and, and let's continue to stay here and do our, and do great work in the community. So. And out of, um, out of distress came the credit in the movement. Yes. And so we're in a position now to be part of the solution going forward. 